As you know, my name is Kyneton the Tech Pro, and in this short lesson, I'm going to teach you how to build a simple neural network in Python using Jupyter Notebook. And the interesting thing about it is if you learn how to build this simple one-layer neural network, then you can always build any neural network, no matter how many layers it has. I just want you to try to understand the procedure I'm going to follow. Now, this is a neural network we are going to build. We have only two layers. Actually, this is the input layer and we have the output layer, layer 0 and layer 1. So these nodes x1 and x2 and x3, they are simply input data, right? So we are passing it into an activation function. So our passing to an activation function does not actually mean that this activation function is a layer. So this is layer 1, this is layer 0, this is layer 1. So simply one layer neural network, okay? So what is happening is that we are going to use this data set x1, x1, x3, and we are going to predict values for y. Now you may know about training data sets and test data sets. In this neural network we are going to build, we will use the same training data set to train the neural network, which is this data you have here. And we are also going to use this data for test data set, and we are going to feed this data into the neural network and see how it's going to predict whether it's going to give us the right predictions that we have here. So let's get started. Again, please subscribe to my channel. If you're not subscribed, just hit the subscribe button below. And in that case, you don't miss any update of lessons like this. And also, if you have challenges, let me know in the comment box below. So hit the subscribe button, like the video if it's been informative. So the only, the first thing we are going to do first, let's import non high. So if you will, uh, you can just call this a simple neural network or the manual way of building a neural network. network. So we are not using any libraries like Keras or, or, or TensorFlow. So the only challenging part, a bit of challenge, is simply the function called activation function. How to implement the activation function, this activation function, which is a sigmoid function. That is the only place we have uh, a little challenge. but I'll, I'll recommend you try to follow as well. It's not going to be difficult. So this activation function, I've written it and I'm simply going to paste it. I'm going to simply explain it a bit. At the first time, when we pass the input through the activation function, it simply gives us the outputs without any derivation, without any derivative or backpropagation. So that first time, we have the read to be False. So the weights that we are going to multiply with, this weight is going to be exactly the same input weight as the, the initial input weight. All right. So that's what I mentioned here. So we have output is equal to pass uh, w times x into the activation function and it gives you y output. So this activation function is what we've implemented. Now we are setting the read to be false because this weight is still the original weight. In subsequent training iterations, this weight is going to change based on the value of the output as it differs from the original output. Okay, so let's just go ahead to write the codes. So let's, let's start by specifying this input as a NumPy array or as a matrix. So I'm going to simply say x is equal to so we have x1 to 3 means that this is x1, x2, x3, right? So we have for each observation, now we have four rows, 1, 2, 3, 4. It could have been 5, it could have been 10. The more the, the, the rows or the more the number of observations, the better. But we've kept it simply simple to make sure you understand it. So let me initialize my impulse uh, layer. So I'm going to say mp.array. By now, you should be able to know how to create arrays in NumPy. If not, watch my other lessons uh, where I explained it. So we have this, the first row. Let's take the second row. I would like to kind of split this up so that it makes some sense. So let me just do it this way. Okay, so we have 0, 0, 1. The second row is 0, 1, 1. And let me shift this one down, okay? So that now you can see how clear it is. The third one is what? Is 010 
zero one zero and the last one is uh one 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 all right so this is our input layer we have initialized the values of x for different observations now if you take out one there's nothing wrong it's still okay simply that the more the or the number of observations the more accurate it is so if we pass zero zero one it gives us zero if we give zero one one it gives us zero or if x1 is one x2 is two x3 is uh, one it gives us one or you can say if x is one 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 and so on because x here is uh made up of x1 x2 and x3 all right so let's now initialize our output y y is equal to is about the same thing except that we are going to transpose this uh np dot array so if we build we can actually build it just like this using one 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 but it's easier to create uh the same array we created and then simply transpose it so i'm going to say zero zero one one so this is what we have here in this case we have uh, actually, this is a row, one single row. So I'm going to transpose it so that it becomes a single column. So I'm going to say dot t. So this is our y value. So I'm going to run this uh, this cell to make sure there is no error. Okay. So it says numpy is not np is not defined. So I'm simply going to come here and say import numpy as np. All right. So I'm going to run it. Run this and run this. Later on, we are going to spend some time on this activation function, but for now, try to follow and understand exactly what is happening here. So the next thing we want to do is to initialize the weights. So the weight has to be randomly generated between um, uh, simply uh, random values between one and two, between one and two. Okay, so let's see. So I'm going to say weight zero, because I'm trying to say this W, this W here is for L0. And we have, at this point, we have uh, the output. So layer 0, we have W0, which is actually the input. So we are going to say uh, 2 times np.random. .random. So we are generating random values. So we are generating random values from three, uh, three to one minus one. Okay. So we are generating random values, and this is the random values for the weight. So you can do, go ahead to check what the values of the weight are. You can just check. You can see we have random values generated, right? Perfectly okay. Now, if you want to have exactly the same thing I have, so we are going to initialize. The random seed so let me just put one cell above let me just initialize the seed so that if you use this seed i'm using now you have the same values and be able to verify your result with my result i'm going to say np.random.seed1 okay so run it run it and you can see the values are changing so meaning that they are completely random weights that we generated i'm going to just take all this Okay, so we have our x, we have our y, we have our w's, okay? So the next thing we want to do is to start the training. Of course, you know that the training is simply, we calculate the value of y. We calculate this y here. And then, let me just take a pen. We calculate y here. Let's call it y star. And then we compare it with the real y. So like we are saying that, we are going to calculate y minus y star. So this will be the error in the in the output. So if we get value for, for y star, it's not exactly y, so it means we have error. And we are going to back propagate this error back into the network. All right, so now let's take 10 iterations. So let's say for, uh, let's, let's just use uh, this iteration i for i time range let's just take 10 iteration out a proof to you that when you increase the number of iterations it becomes more accurate the more the iterations the more accurate it is i would like to say l0 is equal to x 
So just the same thing, this is the same x. So I'm simply putting it in another variable called x0 to show that this is the value of x uh, coming in layer 0, okay? And then I'm going to calculate the output L1 is simply multiply x by w and then pass it into the activation function. So generally you will say np dot dot product of L0, which is actually x and w0, which is the random values we have. Okay. And I'm going to say L1 equal to this time I'm going to pass it through the uh, this function this function here okay so this time is the second time we are calculating uh, we are calculating the values for the output sorry so we have L, this is x this is l1 so e, so this is let's say non lean okay so far so good there is a the force okay so, so we are going to specify, let's see, non lean and I'm going to specify L1. Okay, perfect. So in this case, we have, we are passing it through uh, the, the nonlinear activation function, which is our, our sigmoid function, and the reef takes the default value of the argument, which is false at this point. So I don't want to specify like saying false because it has a default value of false because this initial time we are calculating it. So we are not uh, calculating any error for now. All right, so we have the value for L1 and you know that L1 is the value of Y. So basically what we just calculated now is L1, which is the same thing as Y star. So this is a Y we calculated, which contains error. So the error that is there now is going to be L1, L1, let's call it L1 error, will be equal to Y minus uh, L1, right? So hope you are following. So we have this L1 is the output we calculated by our network, and now we are subtracting the actual value, this is the actual value, from the one we calculated and we have an error. Okay, so the next thing we are going to do is to backpropagate this error into the network. And how do we do that? We are simply going to say uh, data L1 equal to multiply the error, uh, the error times times this time we are we are taking the same sigmoid function and this time we are taking the value to be true so what does it mean it means that we are taking the derivative uh, of the output with respect to the weight right so it means that we have L1 is equal to true. So we have the value for L1, which is the output we have, which is this output, taking the der derivative with respect to the weight. So let's see. Okay, so let's see. Hopefully, and this time we are saying derivative is equal to true. Okay. All right, so now we have a new weight, which is this, delta L1. Okay. So we are now going to update the weight. In, 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 uh, we are going, going to now update the, the weight. So we are going to say W0 equal to W0. So what you, are, what you are going to do is simply follow the instructions and just be doing it and it becomes clear to you with time. NP dots. And this time, NP dots, we are multiplying we are saying W0 plus NP dots and we are taking the dot product of the output, the original output, which is L0 transpose L1 
by uh, the L1 delta. So we are updating the weight. So we are adding the, the, the output from this to the weight. So we are simply updating this weight. So this is weight update that we are doing right now. All right, so the next step is to, let's see. So we have this, we have this, okay. So at this point, we are at this point, we are going to check because at this point, we are, we are updating the values of L. Each, each, for each iteration, we are updating the values for L, okay? So, so for the first iteration, L0, we have L1. For the second iteration, L1 is going to change and continuously. Okay, so at this point, we want to check for the output of L1. So I'm going to print. So at this point, I'm going to say end of training. Let's see, uh, view the output. So let's see the, what the output is now. L1, okay? All right, so hopefully uh, we are using 10 iterations. It may not be very accurate, but let's just see how it goes. I'm going to run it. Hopefully we don't have any error. Okay, so we have error. L1 delta is not defined. L1 delta, so it's actually delta L1. I'm using L1 delta, so it's delta L1. Okay, so I'm going to run it a second time. So we have, you can see that we have 0 0.2, which is close to 0, 0 0.4, less than 0 0.5. But these last two, they are close to 1. So if you round off to 0, to the, to the 1 decimal point, you have 0, 0, 1, 1. But the accuracy is not very good. Let's increase the number of iterations to 100. And at this point, I'm going to run again from here. Run, 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 run. Now you can see that the first one is close to 0, fairly close to 0. Second one is also fairly cl close to 0. Second one is close to 0 because we mentioned that we are using the same data set as the test data set, all right? So, now we are going to increase to 1,000. Let's increase 1,000 and run it again. So you can, have, you can see that this is 0, close to, very much close to 0. This is close to 0 and this is close to 1 and close to 1. I click increase to 10,000. And now we have, we have, oh, sorry. Let's see. Okay, so this, oh no, no, I, I should come from, let's, let's just start from the initial part because it's using the original values to run it. So, let's see, something is not right. Okay, yeah, I, I, I'm not looking at the, okay, so this is exponential, minus 4, so it means that it's exactly 0. So if I take out this, let's say we take, um, this is 1000, let's try 2000, so that we don't have this exponential thing. Okay, so it's still giving us the exponential, it's still okay. So let's get back to 1000, just to be clear about it. So this is fine, 0, 0, 1, 1. So we built a neural network. Uh, this is the procedure to build a, neuro, a simple neural network manually. There are libraries for neural network like TensorFlow and Keras. I'm going to talk about it later, but I want you to get used to how to build a neural network manually uh, in this way. I'm going to stop here. Remember to subscribe and also like this video if it has been informative for you. Uh, leave me a comment if you have any challenges following my lessons.